Hello everyone, you are welcome to today's class. So in this class, we want to continue from where we stopped on indices. So we stopped at the fourth law of indices. So today we start with the next one. Don't forget in the last video, we talked about multiplication law. We talked about division law. We talked about zero index and we also talked about negative index. So today we want to look at the last two uh, laws of indices and uh, uh, this one is very important because if K is not taking see questions on them you might find it called to what to solve so that is the reason why you need to pay close attention to details in this video so I will advise that put anything that can distract you from uh, putting your attention into it away and uh, focus and make sure you watch the, till the end so we're looking at the fifth one the fifth law of indices says raising power to another power so we have power already we are now raising to another power so let's say for instance we have uh a raised to power two then this one now raised to power another what another number which is of power which is three so we have this how do we solve this so let's solve it uh ordinarily so we want to solve this it means a raised to power two is multiplying itself three times a raised to power two times what a raised to power two are you with me so that means that a raised to power two already we can also expand that to be what a raised a times what a multiplied by this a times what a multiplied by what a times what a so if you look at everything it will give you what a raised to power what six hope i'm with you so that is that but if you don't want to follow this, it's going to be stressing yourself. So the law is that you just multiply the power. So it means a raised to power 2 raised to power 3 equals what? a raised to power what? 2 multiplied by 3. That gives us a raised to power what? 6. So in general, we can conclude that we can conclude that a raised to power n raised to power under m will give us what? a raised to power what? n m. So that is the rule. So that is the law. So a raised to power n raised to power another m will give us what? a raised to power what? n m. I, I believe this is very clear. Good. So if that is the case, so let's look at examples. Examples on this before I move to the next one. So let's look at these examples. We ask to simplify the following. So minus 2 in brackets, 2. Uh, y raised to power 3, everything raised to power 2. We have this, we have this. So let's solve them one by one. And on the first one, solution. Solutions. The first one, we have minus 2 y raised to power 3, everything raised to power 2. So what this means is this. So we're going to apply this to affect everything. So that means that minus 2 will be squared multiplied by y raised to 3 raised to power 2. Is that, am I making sense? So because minus 2 is multiplying y cube. So we separate them. So because everything is inside the bracket, this minus 2 will affect this minus 2. This 2 will affect this minus 2 rather. So that is what we have minus 2 raised power 2 multiplied by y cube raised power 3, then everything raised power 2. So we can say minus 2 squared will give us 4 because minus 2 times minus 2 is 1. Minus times minus is plus. 2 times 2 is what? 4. So this gives 4 times y 3 times 2. That is 3 times 2. That gives us 4y raised power 6. That is the answer to the first question. Like you can see that it's very simple. But if care is not taken, you will forget about this. You only multiply 3 by 2 here. You just see the answer is minus 2y raised by 6, which is what? Wrong. Is that clear? So that is why you need to pay attention to details here. So number 2, number 2. Because of space, let me put this one here. 4y raised to power 6. Number 2. 
we have minus 3 into brackets minus 4 x raised power 3 raised power 2 why right. so you can see this one is outside the brackets so it will not affect this so the minus the two here the pioneer will only affect what you have inside the bracket you can see i'm bringing up different kind of example just to make sure that you know what you're doing and if questions should come in any form, you should be able to do it, right? So in this case, this minus 3 is also multiplied by minus 4 squared multiplied by x raised to 3, everything was squared. Is that clear? So that means we have minus 3 times minus 4 squared will give us 16. Minus 4 times minus 4 equals to what? 16 plus 16 multiplied by x raised power 6 so multiply this out you get 3 times 6 that is 18 that is minus 48 x raised power 6 so that is the answer i hope that is clear so that is that on uh, number 2 this is the third example. So let's see how this one uh, is being solved. So the same thing we're going to separate everything. So that means we're going to have minus 7 squared multiplied by x raised power minus 3, then raised power 2 multiplied by what? y squared. Please take note of everything I'm doing here. So this gives 49 because minus 7 multiplied by minus 7 gives us 49. Minus times minus is plus. So this will give us 49 multiplied by x. Minus 3 times 2 will give us what? Minus 6. Then times what? Y squared. So this means we're going to have 49 times. Now, this is another law. This is what? Another law here. So this law here is what? Under what? Negative index. This negative index. Are we going to leave it like this? No. What am I, what am I going to do here? So it's going to be 1 divided by x raised power 6 times y squared. I believe I'm making sense here. So this is divided by 1 divided by 1. So, we are going to multiply everything at the, at the numerator. That will be 49 multiplied by 1 multiplied by what? Y squared. Divided by 1 multiplied by what? X raised by 6 times 1. one. So, so, everything now, this will be what? 49 Y squared divided by what? X raised by what? 6. So, this will be our final answer. Here we want to look at fractional indices. So fractional indices, uh, where we have fraction as the index. So how do we solve that? That is what we want to look at in this uh, last part, which is the sixth law of what indices. So fractional indices, just like you have this, you have a raised to power uh, three over two. Let's put it this way. A raised power 3 over 2. So the law is this. So what we're going to do is this. The denominator will become the root. The denominator will become what? The root. If what you have there is 2, that will be square root. If it is 3, it's cube root. If it is 4, it's 4 root. So in this case, this would be what? Square root. Right? then the numerator will be the word the power a raised power three that is the first one it's the same thing as having it this way square root of a everything raised power three um, square root of everything raised power three still the same thing get the same answer Let, let's look at this uh, example so just like this question now you have this so I want to apply this, I want to apply you see if we are going to get the same answer or not. So applying this one, so it's going to be 
cube root cube root of 27 raised to power 2 so what are we going to get so this will be cube root 27 squared let's just let us pass that 27 squared gives us 729 so cube root of 729 so we so that gives us 9 so that gives us 9 so we got 9 here so let's now look at applying this one so this one is that uh, everything in bracket cube root of 27 raised power what 2 so cube root of 27 is 3 3 squared is equal to what 9 you got the same answer so in general in general so the rule is this a raised by n over m will give us what m root m root a raised by n or m root a everything raised by n so that is the rule that is the law so we're going to look at examples now and see how we're going to apply this to questions to problems okay we want to apply this now we want to solve this simplify the following we have the first one which is square root 25 b raised power 4 so how do we solve this so the same process so you can see this is square root we can decide let's first separate them this is square root of 25 multiplied by square root of b raised power 4 so this will give us 5 times so this square root we can take it towards fractional index so this will give us b raised power 4 everything raised power what half because square root here has turned towards half so this one that's led us to uh, uh, power raised to power another power. So that means we have five times b raised to power four times half. So this over one. So two cancel here. Two will be two. So that is equal to what? Five b what squared. Hope that is clear. Good. So number two. Number two. We have 9a squared divided by 25. Everything is raised by minus half. So you can see this one is it, it has two laws inside. It is raised to power negative power and also raised to power fractional index which is 1 over 2. So the first thing we're going to do here is to remove the negative. So how do we do that? So we can decide to write it 1 divided by this minus will turn to that. Everything here. But by the time you solve it, we just need to swap to flip the fractions here. So that is going to have 25 divided by 9 a squared everything raised by what half so let me prove that for you take note of this let's prove that so if we have it this way if we have it one divided by nine a squared all over 25 everything raised by half so because of the division it means one it means 1 divided by everything here, 9a squared all over 25 raised per half, everything raised per half here. So if you want to change this one to times, it will be 1 times, this will come up, this will come down. So it's rather going through this process. So once you see a uh, negative like this, just flip, flip the fraction, it will cancel the negative. So it should then give us 25 divided by 9a squared, everything raised by what? Half. So we can then move to the next stage. 
So the next stage will then be this will affect this. So we, this returns to square root. This will then be square root of 25 divided by square root of 9 times a raised power 2 raised power what? Half. So which is equal that way. So this will give us for 5 divided by 3 raised power what? Half. 2 times what? 1 over 2. 2 we cancel this 2. So in that case, our answer will then be 5 divided by 3a. So don't be confused here. So this is raised power 2, which is this one. Power raised power power we multiply 1 all over 2. This is over 1. So we can then 2, we cancel this 2. So we have a raised power 1, which is of 3a. So this is our answer. So that is that on the, the second example. So let's look at the third <coughs> example. The third example. So we're going to have, because of this negative, we flip this. So this will give us 27 p raised power 6 divided by 8 y raised power 3. Everything raised power what? 1 over 3. So in that case, we're going to, this will affect everything one by one. This will be cube root of 27 times p raised to power 6 multiplied by 1 all over 3. Power multiplied by power, right? Divided by cube root of 8 multiplied by y raised to power 3, right? Multiplied by what? 1 all over 3. So by the time we call this 3 year 1, 3 year what? 2. 3 cancel 3 here, right? So this will then give us this. Cube root of 27 is 3. And then we have P raised to power 2 left here. This is cube root of 8 is what? 2. We have what? Y left here. So this is the what? The final answer. We can solve for that here. So this is the end of this uh, indices laws of indices we have looked at the six laws of indices that we have so if you are new to this channel kindly subscribe and then turn on your notification bell so that you'll be able to watch get notification of any videos any valuable videos that will be releasing so thank you for your attention so we we'll meet in the next so in the next